Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel and in this video we will continue with our discussion on network automation and we will actually be doing something really cool if you have been following my previous videos on you know the some of the fundamentals like netcon, ansible and so on. Uh, this video is basically switching the gears to the next you know next interesting topic. So we'll be talking about telemetry right in this video and uh, we will actually be at the end of this video we will have a homegrown you know uh, like a DIY kind of a telemetry monitoring setup right um, and uh, that's going to be super cool you can you can like spin up your own you know monitoring system uh, you know uh, after probably watching this video right so <clears throat> let's get started so telemetry um, you would have heard of it before so it's mainly used for streaming data right out of your devices or um, you know uh, streaming events streaming data out of your devices to have a very granular and a real-time kind of visibility in your network right now um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the theory part of it uh, but then yeah let me give you some of the basic details right like for example um, so there are two various ways or two approaches to you know tackle this problem or to uh, kind of deploy telemetry in your network right so one of them is your dial in method and the other one being your dial out you know method right so I mean you can use any one of them so dial in right so dial in mainly uh, uses your netconf right at least in iOS XE because that's what we are going to uh, test with today so with dial in right or you can say dynamic you know subscription uh, the subscriber must kind of like first maintain or establish a session um, you know to to the device and then like subscribe to the data models right so uh, you know you probably will have a script sitting over here and you know that's going to subscribe to your devices so that's going to be like you know dial in right from from your management network or from your script or whatever right you will be dialing into the box into the device right and subscribing to say a bunch of data models right and uh, also that you know it's mainly supported with netconf so the netconf uh, session must remain established you know always to in order you know for for the telemetry data to you know remain streaming right so you should always have that netcon session like between between your let's say again your script and your device and so on right so that's your dial in way of uh, doing it but the dial out right way is wherein the configuration is kind of like set up on the device right and uh, set up it will be set up by the user or network administrator and the device will maintain that subscription configuration and sends the telemetry you know to the script or to the tool without needing an active session to the collector right we will actually be double clicking on this because dial in is something which i have kind of shown you in the previous videos where you know we kind of wrote a python script and using you know nc client we were like dialing into the box and you know getting some of the information using netconf right so that's literally nothing but dial in but dial out is pretty interesting because here the device itself is going to push the data outside the box it's more like a push model rather than a pull model right so um, now so that's that's basically um, you know dial out now uh, like i said the dial out uh, at least in ios xc uh, the dial out is mainly supported with res with the, using the gnmi protocol right so GNMI uh, protocol or Google's uh, you know network you basically call it as Google's network you know management interface it's mainly a it's built on your gRPC you know framework right um, so gRPC as you guys know is a remote you know procedure call which was developed by Google for things like low latency uh, especially for mobile clients you know communicating and stuff right so um, your gRPC basically carries your GNMI right so uh, you can obviously go and do a little bit of research on uh, you know the more details or look at the RFC and stuff like that right but uh, just remember for our discussion that gRPC is kind of like an open source RPC you know uh, framework which is developed by Google and your GNMI or network management you know uh, uh, interface uh, is kind of like riding on top of it right so it is um, it kind of provides a single service or single interface for state management you know with respect to telemetry and configuration and so on right the other interesting thing you gotta remember here is that just like you had your um, <clears throat> just like uh, let me just get that here yeah so just like you had your uh, young uh, uh, just like you had your 
XML, JSON, and YAML, right, which was your encoding formats, right. Similarly, your GNMI protocol also uses what we call as uh, the Google buffers, right. So, especially, I think, let me just find the exact name. Yeah, so uh, the exact name is Google protocol buffers, right. Let me just write it down here as well, so that if you want to, like, go back and, you know, so this one uses GNMI, right, this is Google's, uh, you know, network management interface and the encoding format used over here is your, um, you know, Google uh, uh, buffer, a protocol buffer, sorry. My pen is weird today, anyway, right, so Google protocol buffer, so that's the encoding format which is used, it's again nothing but similar to your, I mean, um, what I mean by is it's, uh, it's it's of uh, uh, it's it's very much similar to your uh, XML JSON um, and uh, YAML, right? Uh, but obviously this is much faster and you know it's smaller and stuff like that, right? So anyway, so like I said, we will mainly be concentrating on the dial out approach, not the dial in approach, not the dial out approach. Now, what is the whole architecture which we are going to build? Is that this is going to be our box, obviously, right? Uh, this is going to be in our case a CSR. Uh, 1000 V, right? It's a cloud router, right? So we are going to have this running some kind of a 16, I think 16.12.3 if I'm not wrong. I'm running this particular version. Uh, now, once you configure telemetry, right, on on your device, you should have a kind of like a stack, right? Now, in the in the world of developers, right, they use these terms very frequently. They use the word called ELK stack, right? So ELK stack is basically, um, you know, nothing but using your Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana right for for your complete end to end you know workflow right for for the whole monitoring tool to be set up right you want a bunch of components and generally they use the term elk stack you know because these are commonly used and very widely used uh, tools right we are going to do it slightly different we are not going to use uh, elk stack i mean uh, we are going to obviously maintain the same workflow but the tools which we are going to use is a little more simpler probably i would say or um, I mean, there's always, it's it's kind of like a debate and you'll have to choose the ones depending on your use case, if it's a complicated use case and stuff like that based on the usability, uh, based on the developer support and st stuff like that, you can choose different stacks. So we are going to use a slightly different version of ELK stack or maybe let's call it as a custom stack, right? So we are going to use, instead of Kibana, we are probably going to use Grafana. Yeah, I know it kind of uh, rhymes, but yeah, so we're going to use... Um, uh, you know, I think, uh, let me get the spelling right, yeah, so we're going to use Grafana uh, over here, right, instead of uh, Kibana, and then uh, for, for so the Grafana, you guys know, right, it's basically for your display purposes, for putting up your graphs and putting up your dashboards and stuff like that, so that's going to be Grafana for us. Logstash, instead of this, we are going to use what we call as Telegraph, right, again, all of these are open source, nothing is, you know, proprietary. All of this open source tools. So Telegraph, you're going to use Telegraph over there. And um, um, uh, instead of Elasticsearch, we're going to use Influx. Right, so we're going to use Influx. So these are the alternate tools which we are going to use. But like I said, it, uh, the industry-wide, you know, you generally use like a ELK stack because it's widely used and this combination is kind of used, right? But that doesn't mean that you have to always use this. The most important thing is these three components over here. The front end, which is going to be a Grafana. The data store, which is going to be an influx, influx DB, and the data source and processing. Like data source and processing is something like um, think of it as a process which is uh, listening on a particular port and you know collecting or receiving all this data from our devices, right? And then storing it in an influx. So uh, that's basically going to be our uh, you know uh, telegraph. So this will be always the workflow, right? So telegraph will be talking to the influx DB. Think of influx DB as a database. Right, and the Grafana also will be talking to the InfluxDB because you know for plotting your graphs and dashboards you would need your InfluxDB. Right, so that's pretty much good. So I think if that is clear, we can actually move on to the next part. So now, coming to the next part, um, um, I kind of ended up already setting this whole system up, right? So I don't want to obviously run this, uh, you know, installation piece again. But then I have kind of documented every single step. So I'll obviously provide this in my on my GitHub page as well. Um, you know, you can, all the steps which are involved, but let me just take a minute to just explain, right? So you start by installing InfluxDB, right? It's a, you have very good, um, let's say, support or very good uh, documentation online to install and all of that, but I have put together all the steps needed, 
right? And in case you end up with some errors on your Linux system, right? You can you can just Google for those errors and talk to the community folks to get your answers, right? That being said, uh, uh, a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, whenever you install any Linux repository, so you add the Linux repository using apt and then you know use the apt get update and install the influx db. And once it is installed, you know we can like uh, you know enable influx and you can kind of like start it. Uh, if this kind of if if you're using this particular system or a VM, um, you know only for your development purpose, you can probably add these commands to uh, always run at startup as well, so that your influx db is always running and you don't have to run these commands explicitly, right? We will obviously check this out uh, once I log into my VM, but I just want to quickly cover the various things. Uh, you can also log in, InfluxDB also has some kind of a shell, right, you can, it also has like a CLI approach, right, you can log in and do some fun stuff over there. Um, Telegraph, like I said, um, is mainly for your processing or to receive those, um, you know, to receive uh, the telemetry data from the devices, right. So, again, the same approach, you use apt-get install and install all of that, uh, whichever is needed, but then you create uh, um, in, in Telegraph, you have to create some kind of a configuration. You have to create like a template file, right, to to kind of uh, define what kind of data is going to be, you know, coming in, right. So Cisco already has a filter called as Cisco Telemetry MDT, right. So you can directly use this. So Telegraph will talk to InfluxDB and it will create, let's say, a database, uh, you know, in InfluxDB with a template called as you know something like telemetry cisco telemetry mdt right now you can like i said telegraph and all of these tools are open source tools you can use this for various purposes since we are using it for cisco telemetry right the model driven telemetry that's why we are basically using this particular template to like set up our database over there right uh, then this is all for just and then you obviously enable your telegraph and you know start and all of that the last part is installing your grafana right so uh, that's pretty much straightforward as well, right? Uh, add the repository, install it, and then start it, right? So that's pretty much it. So that being said, let's jump on to my box. So I have a VM here. Right, and my, uh, let me also show you my Eve setup. It's nothing but I have just like a one CSR device, right? CSR 1000B, I believe it's running 16.12.3. So that's that. Uh, what else? So let me just quickly see if all my services are running. So um, let's start by checking my uh, influx, right? If my influx is running. So uh, just get rid of this. Give me a second. Yeah. So to check my influx, uh, probably I can just log into my, like I said, the influx CLA, right? So there are too many boxes. Let's just get rid of some of these. Okay. So influx, so you can see I have a CLI kind of like an access to it. So let me just quit this. So influx seems to be good. Um, let's also check um, if my uh, telegraph is running and if it is listening on a particular port because telegraph, like I said, it has to listen to something to so that I can like push my data from my devices, right? So uh, let's check that to so sudo. Yep, there you go. And do I have it listening somewhere? By default, it starts to listen on this particular port. You can see here, 57,000. So that seems to be good, right? If you follow all the steps which I have mentioned earlier, I'll obviously, like I said, I'll provide that uh, in the description or maybe on my GitHub page. Um, but if you follow all of those steps, right, um, you know, you should. this should be pretty much like a piece of cake, right? It will uh, start listening on this port. By default, it will start listening on that port 57,000. You can change that as well by changing the configuration file and so on. Cool. That being said, what else next? Uh, Grafana. So Grafana will uh, be running on your, uh, uh, you know, it will run on, I think, port 3000, right? Once it is started, I've already started it. So it should already be running. It's running somewhere. So let's uh, quickly jump on to my, you know, so I mean, I'm trying to, if you see here, this is my telemetry or this is my Grafana dashboard. So you can see this is the IP address of the VM, 192.160.0. You know, so I'm just, let me just get rid of this. And the port will be 3000. I think that's the default port where the Grafana will be running. I'm just uh, connecting to the VM, uh, you know, from my local host, right? I can obviously open the same thing on my VM as well. I just want to, I just like the browser here. So I'm just opening it on my host, right? So this will be your default dashboard, which opens up. Now, first thing which you will have to do is you'll have to like create a data store. So I believe I have created that already, but let me just show you where you do that. 
Uh, I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, so configuration, go to data stores. So in my case, you see, I have a influx, you know, DB created. But, um, you know, in, in your case, maybe just open this up and show you the configuration for this, right? So you just need to uh, 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 put in the name, which is influx DB, right? Because we are using that as the data store. Um, this is going to be the URL on which you are, um, you know, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is the URL on which you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, the whole, the server will be running, right? Right, so your whole influx DB server will be running on over on this port 8086, right? So we have to tell Grafana how to reach this influx DB and that's why we are uh, gonna put in that. And what else? Uh, the rest of the part seems very straightforward. Yeah, in the database, you'll have to mention the name of the database, right? So if I go back to my, um, let me just show you that. So if I go here, if I go to again influx, Right, and if I do something like show databases, I believe, yeah. So if I do show databases, you can see the internal database is something which is created by default. So don't worry about that. This one, this is the database which got created, you know, when Telegraph was installed and we ran that command, right, where we created that whole, um, you know, template based on Cisco telemetry MDT and stuff like that. So we, this was the, this is the database which we will actually be using, right, which is present inside my. Uh, in flux db so that's it i mean that's the only configuration you would need on your uh, grafana i mean after that obviously you hit the save button here so uh, when you hit the save button right it will uh, it will try to connect to influx db and it will check if everything is working fine or not right so that's pretty much it uh, i mean with respect to the uh, grafana at least the pre-configs right so next what do we do next now we have we have set up the infrastructure we have set up the database we have set up the you know display tool or graphing tool and we have also set up the processing tool which is like a telegraph but next is you need to decide what you want to monitor in your network right now to do that like i said we are basically using um, you know we are using grpc um, or we are using gnmi but then you know underlying it is using the same young models right all of these you know network management protocols they use the young models so that's where you know your young explorer comes into play now in my previous video you can always go and check i have already provided uh, uh, i have given a quick overview about what this tool does and so on right right i've already spoken about how to install this and what are the main use cases and stuff like that but uh, you can again i'm just highlighting it over here it's a it's an open source you know explorer uh, i think you will find it on the cisco devnet uh, you know repo uh, it's called as Young Explorer. So you can download this and you can install it. All the installation steps, everything are very detailedly given. So once you're all done, set up, right? This is how, this is what appears, right? Or uh, kind of like, you have to log in using the credentials guest and guest, username, password. But then uh, probably your first step would be going and creating a profile, right? Create a device profile, wherein it's going to appear like this. You have to just create your <clears throat> your name for the profile you know provide uh, the netconf credentials of the device right the username and password like for example on my on this is this is my csr 1000 v right so i love i would have you know enabled ssh and i would have enabled uh, you know netconf over here right so you have to just enable netconf and obviously enable you know ssh um, and uh, that should be enough for my netconf to work so you just need to go and give information about uh, you know your uh, your device like the what is the IP address what is um, you know what is the username password and so on right so that's your profile so once you create a profile you, your profiles will appear here in the drop down you can anytime select the profile and kind of like uh, you know if you want to know all the capabilities which are basically supported by your device all the netconf capabilities you can just click on capabilities here and you can see these are all the capabilities which are you know visible Right, this will have some of the open source uh, young models or it might have some vendor specific young models and so on, right? Now, like I said, we have to decide on what we want to monitor. So in my case, I wanted to monitor three things. One is I wanted to monitor the CPU, right, consumption of the device. I wanted to monitor the memory consumption of the device. And the last one is I wanted to monitor the uh, traffic, right, on the device. Right, so 
every time you want to monitor something first you need to get the young model right so like for example when you install young explorer for the first time you will not obviously see this right so first step you would have done is you would have seen the capabilities here then next what you do is you go to manage you know models manage uh, you know uh, manage models right and uh, if you click on uh, let me just get rid of this yeah so if you click on uh, you know your uh, device and if you do a refresh over here right it will go to your device and it will fetch all the young models which are supported on your device right now this is where what you have to do is you have to now decide which young model you want to use like for example in my case I like I said I wanted to monitor the CPU so I can do a quick search for CPU and you find the various young models here right you can obviously download this directly right you can probably download it like this and then once you download it you know on your local system you can use another tool which is called as Payang right I think some guys probably you might already know so Payang is nothing but a Python uh, you know extension right uh, you can install using pip install Payang but then once you install you can use Payang tool to understand what each young model is doing right so like for example I'm giving you an example here uh, the command is Payang dash F uh, you know you you are gonna say give me the tree structure and this is the young model which I downloaded right this is literally the young model which I downloaded which is IETF interfaces young model right and you can define the tree depth and when you hit the enter you will basically see the complete young model displayed to you right now you can make your decision do you want to use this young model for your telemetry like in my case I'm using this I'm actually using um, I think this one to get basically the input octets and the output octets the I think the number of input octets and output octets right and then you can see the data type also it says you know 64 bit 32 bit over here it's a string data type and all of that so if you want to understand more about your young model you have different approaches one is download the young model from your young explorer and then probably use like a tree uh, you know display using your payang uh, once you decide yes you want to really use this young model you can come down here you can click on that and you can wait sorry not here give me a second yeah so once you come down here right you can uh, select yeah so uh, once you come down here my bad uh, over here uh, you basically go and click on whichever you want and you can sync right hit on click on sync over here so once you sync right what happens is it moves on to the uh, workspace so that particular model will be visible under the workspace so remember the first step is let me just get rid of this again the first step is hitting the refresh button so that the device uh, so that all the models from the device are populated then you can you know use the filter to drill down to the one which you want right and you hit the sync button for that particular young model it will then come down to your workspace now once it comes to the workspace you can click on that young model for example the one which I was working is the processor CPU right so I can anytime come to this particular model over here and you can hit the button subscribe so when I hit the button subscribe it will basically move on to my explorer here right now once I'm on explorer what I can do is I can play around with it like for example um, like I can let me just get rid of this yeah so if I want to get the CPU utilization um, you know right now right so I can just change this to get right and I can run it here <clears throat> and this young model will be now executed right on the devices and you can see I'm basically getting the CPU utilization output here right so for I think it's giving me for every single process it is giving me the CPU you know usage processes also it is giving me the this is this is the CPU utilization right uh, you can see uh, you have the five seconds um, one minute five minutes you know basically whatever you see here right all the values are obtained here right one zero one one right those are the values so you can run your models and this is literally getting executed on my device if you see on my device probably there will be an ex yeah you can see here right so the models are getting executed on the device so this is a pretty cool tool right just why I'm, why I'm showing this here is that this using this tool you can now decide what young models you want and um, you can then decide what is the next important thing is you need to see here on the right hand side we have something called XPath filter 
So this XPath filter is needed to, you know, for us in our telemetry configuration because, for example, let me go back to the same thing. If I want, if I want to obtain, uh, you know, the five seconds, um, you know, CPU utilization from my device, right? So let me just get rid of this again. <clears throat> so if I want to obtain this particular value, right, what I'll do is I can just use the get, you know, over here and I'm going to run this here, right? At the same time, so you see the value is coming properly. I got the value as three, looks good. I, at the same time, make a note of this. This is the hex path because this is the X path which we will need while configuring on the device, right? Because we are doing a dial out telemetry, right? We'll have to configure the telemetry configuration on the device and this X path is very much needed for that. So hope you understood the whole workflow. You can go to um, Young Explorer, can create a profile, connect to your device, check if NetConf is working properly, come to manage, uh, you know, models, go to, you know, device, refresh, get all the models from the device and then select the one which you want right and uh, sync to it so as soon as you sync to it it will come on your workspace and from the workspace you can click on that model and hit the subscribe button and it would basically move down to your explorer whenever you don't want anything you can unsubscribe sub subscribe it or you can delete everything as well so that you keep your workspace everything clean right cool that's awesome now i have done already my homework which means i have three models here which i'll be using in this demo right the memory interfaces and the cpu to get data corresponding to this okay so now let's move on to the configuration on the box right so hope i have my secure CRT here yeah so this is the configuration which will go down on the box so let's start by doing that the first step like i said uh, is enabling uh, netcon for young which i've already done so i'll not do that again i showed you over here right enabling netcon for young all right so next part is we will have to do uh, telemetry right ietf and subscription so you are basically clearing subscription given identifier which is say one and the encoding remember i talked about google's uh, you know protocol buffer so that's the encoding which you will define here you will say encode in google's uh, i think it is kvgpb yeah so this is google protocol buffers now the filter part right so this is interesting this is what i was talking with respect to xpath so we're going to say filter X path and what is the X path? So like for example, for five seconds, we are gonna take the same thing from here. Where is that? Here, right? It's nothing but process dash uh, CPU dash iOS XC dash upper and all of that, right? So let's copy this directly and we are gonna paste it over here. So we are basically telling the device to send, you know, uh, the data corresponding to this particular X path. There you go, that's done. Then you're gonna define the source address, right? In my case, I think I'm gonna use 192.168.0.10 because that's kind of like configured on the, uh, you know, interface of this particular device. So I'm gonna use that. Uh, we're gonna say stream, right? And young, it's a push model or dial out model. So we'll say young, stream young push. And uh, next is we'll have to define the time period, right? When, when do we want device to push it? So we're gonna say, push it periodically, say um, 500 centiseconds. So 500 centiseconds is like five seconds. So every five seconds, the data is going to be pushed out, right? Or probably we can delay it as well if you want, uh, but let's try with five, you know, 500 centiseconds for now, right? I think that should be good. I think the lowest you can go is one second. I'm not sure if you can go beyond that, but uh, we are just testing with like five seconds. Next, you have to define the receiver IP address. So receiver is nothing but the telegraph, right? Because this data is finally going to telegraph where, you know, which will do the processing and push the data to influx then, right? So receiver IP address is going to be, obviously my telegraph is on the same, div on the Ubuntu VM. So I'm gonna put the IP address of the Ubuntu VM. And remember the port number 57,000, which I was showing you earlier. So that's, that's the one which you're gonna use here because that particular port is kind of like listening to this guy and the protocol is grpc grpc tcp because uh, you know your gnmi is obviously built on top of grpc and that's it guys i mean that's it you have configured your telemetry for one of the subscription which is nothing but your five seconds right similarly i'm gonna like quickly put in the configuration for rest of the data which i want uh, pretty much straightforward. I'm just going to copy it. It's based on the same format. I'll make the configuration available 
to you guys or maybe let me show you once i paste the whole thing as well right so let me just do this show run section telemetry i guess okay there you go so this is everything we have right this is whole uh, this is all the configuration which i put in right um, you can see the WAF subscription one i showed you guys but i'm doing subscription two where i'm getting the one minute data subscription three is for cpu utilization five minutes and then um, we have uh, the next subscription four which is getting the memory statistics it is getting the used memory it is getting the free memory from the devices and the last one is we are getting uh, the interface statistics as well which is pretty cool right interface statistics i can now look at the traffic and so on all right so what else so once we are done with this configuration it will take few seconds i believe for for the telemetry to be you know enabled so let's go and check if that is enabled so you can do show telemetry uh, ietf subscription and you can use a number in this case one receiver there you go so when you see the state connected it means everything seems to be good right if it is not connected then you have some problem we'll have to troubleshoot all right so what we'll do next is let me also show you that you know once the data comes here so where, where is the data now so the data is coming from the device to your telegraph now from telegraph let's see if it is coming to influx so i'm just going to show you one troubleshooting command to just quickly see if the data is coming right so what we could do is uh probably let's do this so show um show 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 let's do show measurements these are all you know uh, kind of like term specific to influx it's which is kind of like out of our scope uh, you know so i'm not going to explain everything okay so you have to use databases uh first let's set the database which is uh you know telegraph this one so we use the use that uh telegraph doesn't exist run show databases did i make a mistake uh, stop existing databases okay okay i just made a syntax error uh, you're not supposed to say use database instead you're going to say use telegraph because that's the name of the database cool so once we are here now i can do something like uh, can i use the up keyword here yeah show measurements and this will like literally show all the tables which are present inside this database right and look at this these are the three you know uh, young models you know which we are interested in it is also tracking some other stuff from my local system which is of no use for me these are the three uh, databases which um, you know are available on influx right now which is super cool now if you want to see all the fields which are available so i can do something like show so if, if you are able to see this it means that you know everything is looking good like it is all the data is coming in the fields the databases are created the tables are created which means it is good so if i do show field uh, keys you can see it will basically show you all the various uh, you know uh, fields which are used in each of these tables so if i scroll up you will basically see the fields for this particular table which is your interface statistics right for interface statistics it is giving you this <coughs> excuse me so it is giving you the you know input octets output octets uh, you know receive rx uh, you know speed the tx speed and all of that right all of this we have set up in our uh, device and that's why all of this data is available over here right i believe you also can run some kind of uh, uh, you can also see the raw data over here so i think you'll have to do something like just like your sql right so select uh, maybe <clears throat> let me see so if i do maybe select all uh, i think from whatever pick a table right uh, let's see maybe this one the memory statistics i'm not sure if it will work but let's try okay there was a mistake maybe let me do this thing so because it has a lot of slashes so let me just put this in a yep there you go so you can see we have all the raw data coming in as well right we can we can look at the raw data which is getting streamed from our you know from where from uh, from the device right now i have set the time period to be five seconds so that's why you see a lot of data entries which have already come in cool 
now that we know that the data is coming and all of that is looking good so time to play around with our grafana so let's go back so on the grafana you can see i have already set up a few graphs right so uh, you can see the cpu coming in like this is literally live data right uh, and i can prove it to you so what i'll do is uh, let me probably i'm not sure let's see so if i do a ping to say uh, something like 192 168 uh, i believe it is 0167 i'm just pinging my local host like the my mac right i'm gonna ping probably create a ping of say i don't know 10,000 right the datagram size time probably say three extended okay there you go so i'm just creating some traffic right out of my interface and in no time we should start seeing stuff increasing over here right there you go you can see because the data is getting pulled every five seconds you can see the uptick over here increasing you can see the memory increasing as well there you go there is a spike over here right so this is nothing but your CPU usage, right? So I have, you see those three values, the five seconds, one second, and you know, the five minutes, you can see all of the CPU uptick happening right now. It started because I just created a huge, uh, you know, traffic churn. Uh, the, this is basically the processor memory, which is nothing but your used memory and the free memory being plotted here, pretty straightforward. Uh, and that's, that's basically what you're seeing. I mean, I've just put in like, obviously three graphs, but then, you can create more right uh, yeah so just to be clear these are the graphs which i created it's pretty easy to create these i'm just going to show you probably how to do just to give you an idea right so you can create a go down to create a dashboard right and here you can select the database which you have in our case it's influx db right and uh, here uh, you can select the measurement basically like the table right in uh, basically let me show you the cpu utilization right cpu utilization where uh, say the host is um, sorry not host uh, let me just get rid of this i believe it is to, 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 um, let's see so this okay so you can do that let me give me a second yeah so since um, I believe since we are getting it from only single host, this is obviously not needed. Let me directly go down to, I mean, if you, let's say for interfaces, you might have multiple interfaces, right? So you can then filter it based on a particular interface as well. Since the CPU utilization is for a device, I don't have to like filter over there. Um, here you can see, I can pick whichever value I want. Like for example, I can pick like the five seconds value and um, you know, and obviously the fill null is over here then you know this is obviously not going to be beautiful right from day one so you can like play around you can put in like bars if you want or you can use i believe uh, there is some kind of a visualization so you can even get like a tabular visualization like a gauge and all of that right so again this is like i'm not going to dwell into the grafana part of it because that's uh, obviously outside the scope of this uh, you know video uh, the stuff which i wanted to show you guys is uh, that yes you can create uh, let me just discard this uh, let's go back to our old dashboards let's discard that yeah so what i wanted to show you that is yes this can be done right literally like you can see the spikes right just because i started creating you know more packets you know it started uh, the numbers started increasing right and you can see the spike over here you can see the memory also started spiking and the processor memory is all obviously constant because um, there's not not much we are not like storing or we are not doing anything with the processor memory so you can see there is like 248 mb being used and 1.8 gb which is free right which is kind of like constant right cool so this is this is guys this is literally cool thing which i wanted to show you we are literally uh, we actually ended up building what we call as let's say a diy or a you know in-house monitoring telemetry monitoring tool right um, and uh, this is pretty cool like if you have probably like 10 or 15 routers now you can create such kind of dashboards probably put a drop down over here right uh, and then you can select whichever device you want and you will start seeing the you know analytics for that particular device right so um, hope you guys like this one and uh, um, uh, let me just quickly summarize what we did right uh, so we literally talked a little bit about dial in and dial out 
and then we talked about um, how we can set up our own you know network monitoring or telemetry monitoring tool we talked about the elk stack but we are using let's say a easier version or a, a open source uh, a quicker version uh, to uh, deploy this we are using grafana influx and telegraph uh, i'll be sharing the details on how to set this up with the commands and all of that so that's pretty straightforward uh, <clears throat> so we set this up and uh, finally uh, we also learned on how to decide you know uh, what kind of uh, data we want to stream and how do we get the wh what kind of configuration goes on the box right in our case a csr 1000v and once we set up everything we, sh we started seeing the data you know coming into our grafana dashboard right so uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and uh,